What, what do you think is the de delineation between names that are getting punished and those that are not on a relative basis? I think it's mostly about whether they're, they're growth stocks and how long dated they are compared to, you know, value stocks. Um, obviously, if interest rates are going up, then that increases the discount rate on those future earnings and they're worth less in the present. So that's basically what's been going on. Um, if you look at kind of the performance of growth stocks over the last five or six weeks, um, they kind of hit all time highs around November 8th. That was the day that you had, you know, at least three Fed governors. Um, you know, make very hawkish announcements about rate increases in response to an inflation print that was much higher than expected, around 6.8 percent. We've been told by the administration that inflation was transitory. Obviously, it's been more persistent than was expected. And so as a result of that, the market's been trying to price in these rate increases for the last five, six weeks. And that's really hurt growth stocks. So, you know, from where I sit as a VC, in Silicon Valley, in a way, we're investing in the most growth of growth stocks. We're invested in the most long dated companies, the companies that have their earnings in furthest in the future. And so as a result of that, there's been sort of a trickle down effect from the public markets to, I think, growth stage investors. And we're all kind of waiting for the VC market to find a new level. Right. Do you believe that some of the growth drivers have truly dissipated because we are so, so in exiting a so-called COVID era, hopefully in the near future, um, or, or what's what's durable in the way of growth drivers? And also, I should point out, the bond market's not completely convinced the Fed is going to be as hawkish as they communicated yesterday. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we've had a, a rally. We, we basically had a huge relief rally uh, yesterday in the sort of second half of the market. I think there's two reasons for that. One is just... The Fed finally provided some certainty, and it was in line with what people were expecting. But the other piece of good news that we got, frankly, was that the, the BBB, the Build Back Better bill, has been shelved till March. And the last thing we really needed in this sort of inflationary environment is $5 trillion of new spending sort of pressurizing the situation. So I think the market kind of got what it wanted to hear yesterday in terms of finally getting um, some certainty out of the Fed in term that was in line with their expectations, and then we finally got some good news out of Washington. I mean, in terms of the economy itself, there's a lot of strength there. The Fed you know, predicted 4% GDP growth next year. I don't think we have a problem in the real economy from where I sit right now. It's just been a tremendous amount of uncertainty created by policymakers in Washington, um, having this you know, huge fiscal expansion, a lot of new taxes. There, there was, you know, um, rates. There was a lot of uncertainty coming out of Washington. And I think if policymakers which just let things sort of settle down, um, I think, you know, next year could be a good year for the, the real economy.